Hello everyone and welcome back. In this section of the course we are going to do a deep dive on service workers. We are going to add an offline page to a sample web application and we are going to add download and installation and version management capabilities to that same application that we have running here. In production, in the second part of this course, we are going to be using the Angular service worker but right now we want to learn first service workers in general. So that's what we will be doing in this section. We are going to hand code a couple of examples, starting with an offline page. Let's start implementing our first service worker. Let's have a look here at the diagram to see how service workers work in the browser. Let's say that you have a given domain, yourdomain.com. In your browser, you might have multiple tabs open to your web application running under your domain, all these tabs will share the same service worker instance. The service worker instance will intercept the HTTP requests that are made by any of the tabs of your application and it will forward them or not to the network. A service worker is essentially a middleware that is downloadable and installable and when it's running it's scoped to your application, it cannot access other applications that you are running in your browser. Although it might not look like it, the service worker is the key browser component that is going to allow us to give to our web application native-like capabilities such as for example download and installation, background sync of data, offline support and notifications. Let's have a look at how this works. We are going to create our first service worker. For that we are going to need a registration script. Let's switch back here to our application. We are going to create our service worker here right next to our index.html. The service worker registration file is usually called by convention sw-register.js. We are also going to add this script as a script tag here at the level of the header of our application. This way this script will be added to the page since the very beginning of the download of the single page application. With this in place we are ready to start writing our service worker registration script. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to test to see if the browser does support service workers. If the browser does not support service workers we want our application to still work correctly. Let's remember that service workers and PWA technology in general is supposed to be used in an incremental way, so if there is browser support for it, then we can go ahead and add these capabilities to our application, otherwise everything should still work like in a normal web application. So we are going to test the presence of the service worker functionality by making sure that the service worker property exists in the navigator global object. So if that is the case, then we have service worker support. Let's then start using the service worker API to create a new service worker. We are going to use this object that we just tested for the existence, navigator.serviceWorker and we are going to call the register method. This is going to register a new service worker instance. This method takes a couple of arguments the first argument is going to take the name of the service worker file that we are going to call sw.js. The second argument that we need to pass is a configuration object. In this configuration object for the moment we are just going to specify one property which is the scope of the service worker. We are going to configure this service worker to intercept all HTTP requests that are made by this web client. So for example all the requests to slash API will be intercepted, all the requests for fetching HTML, JavaScript and CSS, every single request is going to be intercepted by this service worker. Notice that if we had put here slash API then in these service workers we would not be able to intercept a call to for example bundle.css inside a service worker that was scoped to slash API. So let's configure our service worker to intercept all HTTP requests. But typically we want to do something after the registration is completed, at least log to the console that the registration process went smoothly. So in order to do that we are going to use the promise returned by the register call. In general all the browser APIs that revolve around 
PWA and service workers, they are all promise based. And this called register also returns a promise. So we are going to call dot then on that promise. And we are going to pass in here a plain JavaScript function that is going to receive a registration object. And because we are running this code in the Chrome browser, we already have built in support for the arrow notation. So we are going to be using that. And in general, we are going to be leveraging the ES6 JavaScript features in these examples. We will also be using, for example, a sync await. Notice that if you are using a clean installation of WebStorm, you should be getting now an error. And that's because the ES6 features like, for example, the arrow notation are not active. So let's quickly activate them. We are going to go to the WebStorm preferences menu and we are going to search here for the language JavaScript. We're going to click into it and we are going to change here the JavaScript language version. Instead of ECMAScript 5.1, we are going to set this to ES6. We are going to apply this. We are going to click OK. And we are going to configure here no. We don't want the file watcher to transpile this. So now all the errors are fixed and we get here our registration object. We are going to be using this later. Right now, we simply want to log to the screen that the registration process ended successfully. So we are going to add here simply this console.log and we are going to move on to write our first service worker. We are going to be adding an offline page to this application and we will show how to do download an installation of an application version, manage multiple application versions. Right now, what we want to do next is we want to start learning about the service worker lifecycle.